Greetings, Six and Prayers. Uh, Pastor Robert with another uh, midweek update. Hopefully this one is brief. I just have uh, one uh, quick change to tell you about that's happening this week. But I guess first I just want to say that uh, we feel like this past week went really well. Uh, being in the sanctuary, being together, being inside, uh, had a good feel to it. And it was great to be in one room and to hear your voice, to hear the church's voice in song. Um, I hope that those of you who were joining us from home found the stream improved, streaming from the sanctuary, the feel of it, the quality of it. Uh, we hope that the, the quality of it, you know, now being inside, uh, helps to not distract from the worship itself and that it really helps you who are not able to be here to feel more present, to feel with us, even while we're apart. So we continue to, to work on that and uh, we're still making upgrades and doing some work in that. So the one change that is starting this week that you need to know about is that we are uh, having to go to an online uh, sign up, an online reservation system uh, for the sanctuary. And the first thing I would just say about that is, I know that that's weird. Um, these are weird times. I know that's probably not something that you wanna hear, um, but I, I ask you just to bear with me and to hear the reasons and try to understand why we need to do it. Um, in, in these strange times, we have very limited seating. You know, we're seating about a third of the congregation in the sanctuary. So, um, so our capacity is limited. We do have a couple of overflow rooms that can hold a number of people, but, um, but it's hard to know when we're going to reach capacity. We're just trying to avoid a couple things, and one is just awkwardness of, uh, of, of being in the position of maybe having to turn someone away if we're surprised simply by the number of people who come in a particular week. Uh, we don't want to be in a position of um, um, trying to accommodate in some weird way or turning people away. But really, the, the main thing also that it will help us to do is to determine if and when we need to go to a second service. If we have enough people signing up, um, that, then we'll know and we can make that shift. Uh, a couple reasons we don't want to do that too soon. We, we, we don't want to go to two services if we don't have to. We want to be in the sanctuary together. Um, as one congregation as long as we can because we feel like that's that's best uh, and it feels best to be together but the second is it's also a ton of work it's a ton of work for us on the staff um, for the worship teams that lead us for the deacons who serve us um, there will be a required sanitizing to take place in the sanctuary between the services and so on so it helps us to help you it helps us to know uh, you know when we need to do what we need to do anyway that's what we got to do there's a link in this email it only takes a minute to do it uh, really all you have to put I think the form has a place for your name and email uh, if you want to just put your name and send and hit send and that's it it really takes a few seconds to do it uh, if you're a family it would be helpful to have one email um, in in your sign up um, but a couple more things about that uh, you need to fill one out for each person in your family. So if there's two of you, do it twice with a name for each. If there's four of you, uh, like I said, they only take a few seconds to do. Uh, but the program that we're using, the, the only way to get an accurate count is if each person does one. If you put multiple people on one page, then we will get an inaccurate count. Um, so one per person takes seconds to do, literally. Uh, if you'll do that for us, it, it will help us to make good decisions. It will help us to anticipate and to be able to lead and to ultimately to serve you guys in how we do this. So um, I know you're all tired of this. I'm tired of this. We're all tired of this. There's no doubt about it. We are praying and longing for the day when, when we can just go back to some kind of normal. But I would also encourage you to just see this as a, a doable temporary setback. Um, I just pulled several headlines together. I get um, a, an email collection of articles from a Christian perspective uh, called the Christian Post. And uh, let me just read you five of the headlines that I received in the last uh, three or four weeks. China, churches are shuttered and turned into cultural centers promoting socialist values. Authorities in China return to demolish Christians' homes after raising their church to the ground. China seizes children from Christian parents and threatens to send their children to re-education camps. Persecuted Christians ordered to renounce their faith 
or lose COVID-19 aid in Southeast Asia and Africa. 1,200 Nigerian Christians killed in the first six months of 2020. 1,200 killed in the first six months. Children taken from their parents, their Christian parents, to be put into national re-education programs to destroy their faith. Churches being razed to the ground, members' homes being destroyed. My friends, we can do this. We can do it with joy, we can do it with gratitude. But we also ought to do it with a certain amount of humility. A humility that recognizes that given the circumstances around the world, it is a relatively small challenge that we face. So let us face it with courage, joy, and without complaining. In the name of Jesus.